What do you want me just to tell you now? Right? So tell us how you tell us how you're feeling today. Obviously, I feel I feel hungry right now. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ricardo Broxham and I'm an elite rider for Honeycomb Pro Cycling. Cycling-wise, I actually did everything I could at school. So as a primary school kid, I played cricket, did athletics, did the works, and then um, I got into cycling because my coach said, no, it will make your knee strong, will help with, uh, with fitness, basically. And then... Uh, started training with our local bike shop. Um, there a, a shop opened about two blocks away from my house. And uh, so I basically just trained with the guys and I, I fell in love with it. Um, I got my first road bike for 800 Rand. And then that's it. That was, that was I was hooked on cycling ever since. Um, and, and, and where did it take you? Where did you go? How did it grow into such a passion, you know? Oh, so, 14 years old, I did my first provincials. I finished dead last on my 800 Rand bike. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I wanted to prove a point, to be like, I'm not the last, I'm not the worst in, in Pumalanga. Um, same year, different bike, I finished fourth at Essays, uh, which, was, which was a, okay, there's, there's a bit of improvement, but I wasn't satisfied. So um, I actually signed with, uh, not, not signed, I joined the, the Europe Car Club after that. And then uh, with Mark van der Merwe, he's actually currently the coach of Team Honeycomb as well. And then I basically just grew into the sport from there. Um, I loved it, I enjoyed riding my bike, I dreamed. Um, I'd never studied, I only rode my bike. Um, guy, all around with the mountain bike or so yeah I just basically um, I enjoyed it that's that's what it did it I just enjoyed riding my bike and it took me places fortunate enough so from from 14 years old till now I've been I've been to Europe a few times um, I stayed in Switzerland for for a few months and, and, and you're being humble here, tell us, you, you know, you went to Europe, what did you go to Europe to do, you know, where did you stay, what was Switzerland staying yeah. about, Let, let's get some results here. You know, okay, you some humble. results. Okay, so if I go back to my first trip in Europe, 2017, everybody warns you like, if you're the best in the country or you're the second best in South Africa, be ready to finish dead last in your first European race. <laughs> so we pitch up in this race, 50 k's, but it's a cobblestone race. And uh, on the starting line are World Tour teams. I remember seeing Lotto, there were Lotto Bellasol back then. And a few, a few World Tour teams on the start line and they do their 180k uh, classic ride. And then we have our kind of criterium race. And I thought to myself, oh, it can't be right. That hard racing 50k's, it was probably the hardest 50k's in my life. Um, I finished in the bunch, barely, barely, just hanging on. So 2017 to me as a first year junior was just opening the legs up, getting the speed in the legs, just being there, racing, but not expecting too much. Same year we, uh, we stayed in Belgium, we raced in Belgium, and then we went to the Junior Tour of Ireland, also my first year, and I'm suffering in the gutters, like so badly, like I'm about to drop in the gutters. And here comes the domestique for the Irish team, just pass you with like five bottles in his back. First year junior, same age as me, and I'm now thinking to myself, this guy just had ice cream on the start of the line, and he's beating me. Yeah, I'm dieting, and I'm focused so hard, and this guy just had, and he's just cruising past me in the wind. And I thought to myself, the racing is proper hard. Maybe I should reconsider. So, yeah, that was my first European experience. Next year, I think basically same training, um, everything, same coach, I'm just a year older. Um, and I pitch on the same 50k start, start line, same race, first race of the year, and also international field, we have um, uh, Aussie team, few Belgian teams, like the proper teams, um, and I, I was competing, I was attacking. First lap in, I thought to myself, yes, let's attack, and I attack, 
and I check around and, and nobody's there. So I just stuck in a breakaway, breached, like I'm racing, like suddenly I'm expecting to finish stone last because I did, I did last year, but now I'm racing, I'm a year older. Um, so yeah, the growth has been amazing. And then I actually finished, I was the first South African to podium on that race. And uh, Tom Boonen was actually the guy that gave us our prizes. So I got to meet Tom Boonen as well. Sure. Yeah. Incredible. And, and that then took you to Tour of Ireland. And, and, and you know, like from the year before suffering in the gutter, getting passed by domestic with water. Yeah. How was the second attempt at Tour of Ireland? So, second attempt, Tour of Ireland. I was expecting some year. I uh, finished 26th the previous year. Um, I was expecting a top 10 maybe a stage one year and there. Um, but I was prepared, I was focused. I knew the first stage of my heart because I was sleeping at night and then waking up and telling myself, I want, I want to do this, I want to do that. Like I just got there out of pure passion. I was driven to do my best race. Um, and I go off the prologue, I was the fastest time, so I was in the hot seat and I was like freaking out, I'm in the hot seat. But, and everybody's like cheering on, like well done man, you're in the hot seat. But I think I was probably the 60th rider out of 200 to, to be. So there's, there's over 100 riders to still finish and I said, guys, just keep it quiet, don't hatch your chickens before they hatch, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And I finished third in the prologue of the, and then I knew. I actually have a chance this year. Um, stage, I think it was stage four. I got a puncture. Um, and our team car was, wasn't on, so I got the, the, the mechanic team car, put in a new wheel, and the bearings were rubbish. I suffered the whole day in the saddle. Um, it, was the, it was probably the hardest stage in my life with that wheel. I never realized the bearings, but over the stage, I felt the bearings were, weren't great. But, um, so I had bad luck. I had good luck. Um, I attacked and I managed to be the first South African to ever win the Junior Tour of Ireland. Sure, an incredible yeah. result. And, and just to give us some names of people that have won the Junior Tour of Ireland before that are, are racing. I think currently Sam Bennett, he was a previous winner of the Junior Tour of Ireland. Dan, Dan Martin is a previous stage winner. Uh, Jaron Thomas is a previous, I think he only finished, I don't think he even podium. Um, I think the Postelberger brothers uh, raced Junior Tour of Ireland. Um, so some big names there, and, yeah. and, and did that lead you to track cycling? Because I, I believe you've got a passion for track cycling. So my, my roots of track cycling were hiring a track bike or lending, borrowing a track, track bike from Jeremy Martins. Uh, got to the track and I just purely enjoyed it so much. The racing is fast um, and I, I, I just enjoyed it. Um, second time on a track bike was 2016 essays um, with, a, with a teammate and we just enjoyed it. We drank milkshakes on the, on the on the sideline and we raced solid hard on the, on the field, so. And, 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 and that took you to some good achievements, some great achievements on track cycling? Yeah, so track cycling also 2017, I went to the Junior Track World Championships as a first year junior. It was a massive experience to be racing me. Um, but, but same thing, um, I was a year probably too young. I was fortunate enough to to go there as a first year, to have the opportunity to go. Um, but racing, I barely qualified for the finals. Finals came and I, I think I lost a lap or two. Like I just wasn't there, I wasn't up there. But um, 2018, a year later, also I think it was a month and a half after Junior Tour of Ireland. So I had solid races in my legs, um, solid performances. And uh, yeah, 2018, um, Junior World Track Champs actually went pretty well. Um, I, I finished sixth in the Omnium, um, and I was I, I crashed in the last two laps of the final race. So I think a medal was definitely in contention there. I wasn't after the Junior Tour of Ireland. I wasn't there to just finish top ten. I was there to podium definitely. 
So 2018, great year. Yo. Junior Island Tour winner, six at Omnium tracks, peaking in your career, junior, and then boom, Yo. shock. Tell us about it. So the shock came, I was two days back from my European trip. Um, I already signed a contract with the World Cycling Center. So I wake up uh, the morning after my European trip in my off season and I see on my iPhone, oh, it's Switzerland. Super excited, maybe thinking they want to, to make me sort out my visa. Uh, there's a few paperwork that has, needs to be done before I can fly over next year, 2019. And I answer the call and they're like, hey, I've sent you an email. Uh, please, it's quite important. Uh, obviously, it's important. And then you've been banned for using a banned substance. And it was heptaminol. So that was the shock of my life. I thought, uh, it's a dream. I'm just about to wake up. And, but it, it was never a dream. Uh, true story. So heptaminol, tell me about heptaminol. I mean, I don't even know what it is. You know, yeah. What is it? I'm, I'm pretty sure in those two years you researched it extensively to find out what, what it is. Yeah. So heptaminol, um, right off, if you Google heptaminol, it is a blood pressure stimulant. So a stimulant, caffeines are stimulants, uh, even some of the drugs, headache pills are stimulants. So heptaminol is a stimulant which is banned out in season and not out of season. Um, so we also found um, that heptaminol isn't, you can't find it, South African drugs don't use heptaminol. For instance, if you go to Clicks, they have a manual with all their drugs in. So heptaminol doesn't, like local pharmacies, you can't find anything containing heptaminol, which I found, my personal research. Um, so clearly it must have, it, I must have got it in Europe somewhere, um, yeah. And, and, and now, you know, watching you over the past few, few, few seasons, if you want to call it, in terms of, of training camps and that, you seem to be quite paranoid about certain things now. You know, I'll even yeah. take you look at the back of a lunch bar to make sure what's on the back of a lunch bar. So yeah. it's changed your dynamic, hasn't it? Yes. I would love the opportunities to sit around with, with youth and just basically prepare them for what's coming. Yeah. Um, I came out of Adam Alua. It's a place in the middle of nowhere. Um, I wasn't prepared to be tested positive for nothing. Yeah. I mean, I don't even drink panadas when I get a migraine. Like, I'm a Bursian and we don't do that stuff. Um, so, yes, I am paranoid. Um, I was completely caught without even knowing it. So, I'm paranoid, but I also don't want to be naive anymore. And I think my lesson is a good lesson to learn for everybody, whether you're younger or older than I am, that um, we have the responsibility to check our water bottles constantly, um, be sure where you're going, what you're eating. So um, I think paranoia is not necessary, but to really be alert for what you put in your mouth. And so straight off, um, it was the worst thing that's probably ever happened to me. Uh, I signed my contract, my dreams in Europe are open, it's open door, the sky's the limit and I pretty much, I'm in there, um, and uh, so losing that was quite hard, especially it was my matric year, it's where you kind of decide this is what I want to do in life and you pursue that, so losing, losing that opportunity um, yeah, was difficult at first, uh, I basically I just gave up. I said to myself, if this is what life is handing out towards me, I don't want it. I don't want to live. I don't want life. I want to give up. Um, fortunately enough, I have um, amazing parents, uh, God-fearing parents. Um, so my mom basically forced me to go to youth church. That was right after I shouted at her and said, nah, just slam the door in her face because I was going through through pain and emotion and then that night I went to youth church and I've never felt the presence of God as strong and it's sad that we need to be in our lowest to experience him but at my lowest I experienced him and uh, it forever changed my life. Um, I realized that cycling whatever I need to pursue my dreams aren't bigger than him 
is the best thing there ever is in your highs and your lows. So um, being banned was the best thing that's, that's ever happened to me. Um, I'm forever grateful for that, for the, for the life lessons I've learned, um, for the people I've met along the way. Um, it's, it's built my character, it's strengthened me, it's strengthened my spirit. Um, at this stage, I'm ready for whatever life can throw at me because I've been through, through what I've been through. You know, and, and, and that obviously brings us to the next question. You know, you, you've got two years off the bike or two years on racing. You know, your, your, your path has changed. You've, 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 you've found new hope uh, and new guidance, and, and, but it keeps you on the bike. It doesn't take the bike away from you. And then the hunger to come back. And what does that represent now, signing for Honeycomb? and joining Team Honeycomb, you know, we've heard about the past, but what does that bring for the future yeah. for you? I think for future, um, it, is, it is encouraging to see uh, somebody fail and just get back up, get there. So, um, at first this was for me personally, I had to conquer emotion, I had to conquer, I had to face the people that pointed fingers at me. So I think basically if, if we look at short term goals, I'm looking into racing track. Um, track has definitely been, uh, it's been my highlight so far. I love racing track, but um, I know improving endurance rides on track will also improve your, it would improve your endurance on the road if we look at a rider that I actually personally know, he just signed for Enios, a youngster my age. I raced against them. So I know the two complement each other really well. But I think straight off when I signed the Honeycomb contract, I was thinking to myself, um, when I was 16 years old, I needed guidance. Um, I needed people that I look up to, like the, the guys, the riders I was looking up to. I needed them to, to show me ways of life that is sustainable to be an example to me. Um, I, I didn't only want to look up to somebody that was the best at what he does and he's too good to, to make time for you. So I think um, to kind of develop a culture that doesn't look over the heads of the youngsters but actually promotes them for who they are. So to me personally, it's a big thing to, to influence youngsters in a proper way of life. To, to respect their parents, to respect their girlfriends, to respect life, to respect their friends, and to respect themselves is the most important thing. So um, my main purpose in cycling is still cycling, but then my lifestyle and what, what I want to promote, I want that to be an influence to the younger generations coming up and even to the older generations, because the sporting world is crying out for that. Uh, we don't have men with, with guts to, to stand up for who they are. Um, that's why we actually have ladies currently standing up for that. But um, yeah, I think just to promote men, to promote who we are. And uh, that's, that's why. Yeah. So now take us through Honeycomb. Um, obviously, you, you've signed with us, you've said it's, it's, it's amazing, and we obviously clearly love your work. Uh, where do you see Honeycomb as a team? Uh, where do you see the team going, the projections, that type of thing? So Honeycomb, um, I phoned Mark in December saying, yes Mark, I haven't been on the bike for two years, I'm a bit overweight. Uh, I actually just want to get fit on the bike again. And then 15 minutes later, here comes the contract. Uh, and Marcello Nudi uh, actually phoned me and I, I love Marcello. Hands off, he's the coolest, um, the best guy to be around. He loves promoting youngsters. So I think right off, Honeycomb got their structure right. They didn't only get their structure right for, long, for short term, they got their structure for long term, hands on. They have the best in the, in the country to, to, this is a long term investment. So I think Honeycomb will definitely be there for quite a while. And um, I think with the right opportunities, Honey can, Honeycomb can, can quite easy, easily be the biggest team we've seen in this country so far. Yeah.